Okay, so I'm back here. Sorry about that. So this is the, the, the other paper I'm showing you, and this one's called The Observational Constraints on the Orbit and Location of Planet Nine in the Outer Solar System. Okay. This was done in June 20th, so just last month. We used an extensive suite of numerical simulations to constrain the mass and orbit of Planet Nine. I recently proposed to perturbate in a distant eccentric orbit of the outer solar system. We compare our simulations to the observed population of aligned eccentric high semi-major X or Kuiper Belt objects, KBOs that determine which simulation parameters are statistically compatible with the observations. We find that only a narrow range of orbital elements can reproduce the observations. In particular, the combination of semi-major axis, eccentricity, mass of planet nine, strongly dictates the semi-major axis range of the orbital confinement of the distant counterbelt objects, counterbelt objects. Although allowed orbits within the confines of the, their orbits and their rotation, okay? So what they're just saying is, Something is out there. It's the mass between five to ten Earth, twenty Earth masses, orbitally confined. Generally has an orbital plane similar to that to that of the planet, and is inclined at about thirty degrees from the ecliptic. Okay, just like I was telling you. We compare all the allowed orbital positions, estimated brightness of Planet Nine, and previous ongoing surveys, which would be sensitive to the planet's detection. We use these surveys to rule out approximately two thirds of the planet's orbit. Planet Nine is likely near Apelion with an approximate brightness of 22 to 25. At opposition, its motion, mainly due to its parallax, can easily be detected within 24 hours. So what they're saying is, if they can figure something out with, when it starts going in opposite motion or going around, like I guess the Apelion point, then they can, they realize that, that they could find this and see it in a moment because I think that's what it would literally pop out from below the ecliptic because that's what they're saying. And I think that's the September 23rd date they're talking about. Okay. Since the time of discovery, it has been clear that a large perturbing mass either was present in the outer solar system or at some time with a distance of 76 astronomical units and Sedna is essentially immune to direct interactions with known planets. So it can't be that, all right? But they think when this thing was born out of the star cluster, when, when our whole solar system was born, that it was basically a part of it, at least a part of our binary star system, which I believe is serious. Serious A and B are most likely, we're, ser we're serious C, or this is serious C, whatever it is. I believe that we're part of that that has something to do with it, it has to. Osiris, Sirius, it's all there, and you can look into that more if you guys want. I'm sure we'll be talking about it someday. Yeah, but, uh, but when they combine the probability of everything, all right, there's less than 0.01% chance of it not being planted as. Less than 0.01%. Additionally, it says, that it could go 180 degrees away from the period, perihelion position of the planet, saying that this thing was probably, what, what I get out of that is it's, that's the halfway mark. That's their nice way of saying it's halfway between closest to the sun and furthest away from the sun. So I, I think that's how they're trying to explain it. They try to hide things with nice, nice big words basically do it that way but they show when they do these these certain things they show that they start getting a cluster a grouping that makes sense when you start running certain models that are certain earth masses things like that and you start getting a definement of where this thing could be at essentially and where it's gonna the perihelion longitude and latitude right so you can take this use it and know how to look in the sky for this thing but what I want to get to right here, they showed when they combined the clustering in the pole angle, it was an unexpected 99.993% confidence level that this is planet X, okay? 99.993% confidence, okay? I feel like that's pretty confident. 
These are astrophysicists. If they said 100% sure, they wouldn't have their job anymore, I'm sure of that. But they know, they call it Planet Nine, talk about it like it's there and they see it every day. The perturbations due to Planet Nine and Neptune were under unaccounted for, accounted for by the direct in-body fashion and secular effects of remaining giant planets were modeled by the quadrupolar field of the sun. They're basically saying a bunch of crazy shit and proving it with awesome science, okay? This is not fiction. It's showing you when, when it reaches a certain mass, if you add a certain mass, anything above 10 to 20, they do not replicate the same data. It starts being skewed. So they know it's most likely around 10 to 20 Earth masses, more and more close to 10, I'm thinking. But yeah, for the 20 mass planet, it shows that they can't re reproduce the observations after a certain point. But for the 10 mass, it, it does. It starts, all these numbers are known numbers. And see how they're hitting them? This line goes across known numbers, basically. This one only hits it. Uh, I don't even know if that is one. But it only hits it once, I believe. See, this is what I don't like, is they, they, they get into, at some point they tell us, just like I told us, that it's about 10 Earth masses, and it goes up to, just like this number here, it says 0.3 astronomical units to the Earth, like it comes that close. So from that's a third of the distance of, from us to the Sun, so that's like Mars, Jupiter, it's in between Mars and Jupiter, is the closest it comes, is what it sounds like. They did all these simulations a thousand times and came with the same results. Okay, a thousand times. And it came out 99.993% positive that it's this object. When they do the groupings, as I said, you do it at a certain mass and certain things start replicating, they see all these replications. The red ones are the 10, 10 Earth masses, I'm assuming. And there you go. So the data... The data is all there. It's all there. 